Hey guys, welcome back to another snapshot video. So this week we got a couple technical changes. Let's check them out. The first thing I want to talk about is the new slider in the video settings menu where you can adjust the simulation distance. There will also be a server setting for this, of course. So the simulation distance basically determines how far away entities are being ticked or processed. The render distance refers to how far away you can see chunks and yeah, they separated the simulation distance from that. Previously it was tied to the render distance. So yeah, in this example we got a render distance of 20, you can see chunks this far away. But yeah, an animal that would be that far away um, is not being displayed in the first place. But additionally it also wouldn't yeah, randomly wander around or do stuff like that. And this will definitely help improve the performance, especially in the overworld. In the nether or end dimension, we usually don't have entities that far away. So entities in this case would mostly be the passive mobs. It won't matter that much, but in the old world, there's usually a lot of animals around the player. And by yeah, splitting this up, you can improve the performance. I think it's actually definitely a good step because why would you care if a pig uh, that is 200 blocks away from you would wander around? This doesn't really help you. In most cases, you can't even see the pig because it's not even rendered that far away. There's also a slider here for the entity distance. You could also set that higher, uh, but usually there's really no point um, yeah, processing entities that are that far away. Okay, we can also see some other effects this would have on entities. If I set it to really low, so for example, two chunks, you can also see some animals that are no longer being processed. So they wouldn't wander around. Only if you get closer again, yeah, they would do things again. Okay, I actually set this to two chunks, which definitely yeah, would also affect things like shooting arrows. They would get stopped by an invisible wall, you can see here. Only if I move closer to the chunk, yeah, would they fly further again. Okay, this could also mess with your redstone. So here we got a dropper that shoots out an item and a hopper below, um, yeah, picking it up. So this would then trigger this redstone lamp for a moment. If I move away now a little bit, then this has yeah, direct influence on the redstone. As you can see, the item kind of stuck, it doesn't fall down. So only if I move closer, it would activate. Let's check out what happens to a minecart that I want to send into the non-simulated chunks. It will just get stopped on the chunk border here. Okay, only if I move closer, the minecart will also move again. And yeah, get stuck on the next chunk border. So there's something that already happened in the game, but usually you couldn't see it. At the border of your render chunks, there was already a um, yeah, line of chunks that wasn't simulated. So the minecart would stop similarly, but usually you couldn't see it because it was that far away. So you definitely gotta be careful with setting the simulation distance because it can mess with your redstone and yeah, it could also have other side effects that you don't want. I was also curious what would happen if I set the render distance lower than the simulation distance. So I was kind of hoping that the minecart would actually yeah, return, but it seems like those border chunks where entities aren't simulated are still in the game. So the minecart yeah, stops even before it's out of the render distance. Okay, so we basically have a simulation distance of one chunk now. I was kind of hoping that the yeah, simulation distance would be independent of the render distance, but it's not yeah, entirely the case. So there's really no point setting the simulation distance higher than the render distance. Here we got one more way how setting the simulation is a little bit too low could maybe become a problem. We got a little bamboo farm here, which is still working since it's within the random tick range. But yeah, the entities aren't processed. So all the blocks that are yeah, getting destroyed drop items, but they would just stay in mid-air right now and would only get loaded once they get near the farm. So in case you would have a yeah, larger farm like this, all the entities wouldn't get loaded, so also the items wouldn't get collected. And once you get near it, then maybe a ton of items would be loaded at the same time, which could, yeah, in the worst case, lead to a lag spike or even a server crash. So if we go near it, you can see all the items now are dropping down. I think there's definitely a point having the simulation distance a little bit lower than the render distance, because this could allow you to play with a higher render distance without straining the CPU that much. Especially interesting for servers, for example, on Sidecraft, we had 
HD render distance always in either 12 or 16 going higher usually wasn't that great for the server, especially in old with all the animals around. But now we could actually set the render distance server side also to 32 and then all the clients would benefit from that without straining the server that much. So it's definitely a nice addition to have. Um, according to the patch notes, there will even be more changes. So currently only entity is affected, but Mojang is planning to also have blocks being affected by this. So blocks would be redstone, for example. So if they're outside of the yeah, simulated area, then redstone also wouldn't work anymore. Not sure if they're gonna add a separate slider for that or it's gonna just be uh, within the simulation distance slider. We'll have to see what happens in that regard. Next, a brief update on the ore distribution situation. This has changed a lot in the previous snapshot. So this week, copper ore will be more common, but it would only generate up to Y96 instead of Y192. So here we got a dripstone cave where you can find yeah, plenty of copper ore. So this is at Y50, I believe, yes. If you go a little bit higher, there's another dripstone cave, which is above Y96. So there's no copper ore here. And according to the patch notes, Lapis Lazuli ore generates in blobs, which is not really that special. So here we got another blob of Lapis Lazuli. We're kind of used to that from previous versions of the game. And one more change, gliding with a block will no longer in all cases stop you from sprinting. So previously, if you would hit the block, you would go back to walking mode in every case. Now, if you collide with the block in a very tiny angle, so smaller than 0.9, degree, uh, you would keep sprinting. So let's actually try that out. Yeah, so I could actually light off the wall here and hug it and still keep sprinting. But that's obviously still the case where the angle is too large and you would go back to walking mode. There's also a smaller world generation change, the growth biome that you can see here finally has trees. So the spruce trees would now generate in a growth biome. Alright, that's all for today. Thanks guys for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.